Hey guys, it's Maxi here. Welcome to part two of the Young Team, uh, Motherwell FC Football Manager 2018 journey. Of course, the aim to be last ever FM save on YouTube. Hopefully, I keep my word. That's the plan. So yeah, um, we've played our first competitive game in the Betfred Cup, a trip to Stenhousemuir. So we'll cover that in this episode. Look over the pre-season, a couple of changes in terms of staff. One signing, purely on the basis of a parent club we've brought in. So yeah, and of course we'll have the, the match against Airdrie as a live play as we do the episode. Team's already picked for that, so we're good to go. So we shall start with the changes to the coaching structure. Now we were a few coaches and recruitment staff down. We are still actively looking for some more medical staff. But we have brought in a data analyst, which has been Chris Markham. So he's come in, quite happy going with a team of Martin Foyle, Ross Clarkson, Davy Brown, Martin Corrigan, and Stuart Ogilvie. So that's fine. The, if I just quickly go here, it's probably best covering it all. So we've brought in Ian Durant to basically help Morris Ross. So to some people, you could say a bit of a Rangers connection there, having those two. But I just feel like that's some good people to have at the club. And I was kind of looking for someone with a bit of experience, a, a big-ish name that they could attract with a decent wage. Managed to bring in former England reserve manager and the former Man City coach, former Arsenal UV player, David Platt. So that was a good person to bring in. We've managed to get him down to 800 quid a week. Admittedly, as on a, you know, you can get 25% wages increase every year. I think he's someone that can certainly you know, help develop the younger players were coming through there. We've got a lot of good attributes, including working with youngsters. And uh, as I say, he's going to be working with younger players in the first team, so hopefully he can do bits. So I did mention as well, we have a parent club now. And I just wanted a bit more money in the club because obviously we do need to pay the debt off. So as you can see, we're now over our wage bill. Not from the signing. Uh, basically renewing the contracts of Chris Cadden and Richard Tate, basically ensuring that, you know, we don't lose them in Bosmans that were guaranteed if they go and get money for them, especially Chris Cadden can connect a few bob in this game. So that was pretty much a main thing to do. So that's been covered. So we went over there. But the parent club is basically affiliates. It's an Etienne. So I wanted more money, that's what I just said, you know, someone that can get a rink up. The options were St. Etienne or Las Palmas. Due to the really good facilities they've got. It said basically they had excellent youth facilities, I'm sure it was. I don't know why it's not popping up just now. It wasn't a Senate end, but they basically had like great youth facilities and I just felt like if that's going to help good young players coming through. So a good club to be linked with and that we've managed, if I just quickly go back to my senior squad, to, to bring in the young star, Charles Abbey. So just someone's got a wee bit of, a bit of, you know, he can finish, he can dribble, good first touch, a bit of technique. Determination is good. It's basically just giving them another body up front. I know I've got plenty with the form of, you know, Curtis Main, Danny Johnson, Connor Salmon, but it just means I can maybe punt Curtis Main early. We can maybe utilise Danny Johnson elsewhere. Because pretty much we'll be playing Ross McCormack up front. Now, before we look at the team, we'll just cover the matches so far. Obviously, I've never done friendlies in this game. I just hate it. They're just they're pointless. And, well, they're not pointless, but I just feel managing them's pointless. So I'll leave that to my assistant. So, a 2-1 defeat to Bronby at home, Cadden scoring, but it was a Joel Cabongo double, giving them the win, and then a 2-0 win at Toledo, Chris Cadden, and then Liam Donnelly, for some reason, on penalty duties. But the first game we took charge of was Stenhouse Muir away, 3-0 uh, win there, three goals in the space of nine minutes, Ross McCormack with a beautiful free kick, and then a double by Gaboli Aribe. So it was good to see, we put a, a 4 Pretty much a 4 3 3 models play. It's pretty similar to a team to model play in real life, but McCormack doesn't start and McHugh is in for Rodriguez Gordon because I prefer just to have McHugh there. And Gordon's just a centre mid and that's not a DM, and it just. I'd prefer to just ease him into a DM position as a regista or another position, but I was happy with that. Good professional performance and hopefully something we can carry on against Airdrie. Just to show you what I was talking about with the three different tactics. So my home tactic will be that kind of 4-3-3. The away tactic 
is basically a 4-4-1-1 and the old firm tactic is a 4-2-3-1, very defensive minded. So for this one we have rotated a little bit uh, as it has moved people about it seems. Thank you. So a few people uh, a bit fatigued for obviously playing just weekend there and it's still effectively pre-season. So we do play like a direct counter-attacking football, but for this one I've went Gillespie and goal. Burns going to play at left back, we're going to go Hartley and Aldred at the back, Richard Tate back at right back, Kermit Q will sit, Alan Campbell will play alongside Alex rodriguez Green. we're going to have Arabia off the left, Hasty off the right, and Ross McCormack up front. Got to give opportunities on the bench to Lisa Connor Salmon, Curtis Main, and we can try and get him on, Kyle McDonald as well, and uh, just giving the likes of David Turnbull a rest. Cadden, Livingston, Grimshaw, bit early for them, although Grimshaw is carrying a little bit of knock. So yeah, overall it's a good opening game. So let's crack on against our rivals, true Lennox rivals, Airdrie, Marvel 45 of the bookies, 26 degrees. I sincerely doubt we'll ever see that anytime soon. But it should be interesting, United picking up the win, St Mirren have yet to play, but if we can get two wins from two, it can give us a good benchmark before we get into the more difficult games. And it's also interesting that these are the first couple of matches that I've played on this year's FM. In 3D, it's one thing I've just never done. I've just stuck to 2D, just I've been trying to fire through games quite rapidly. People to look out for here, I'd say Dale Carrick, of course, maybe Declan Glass on the left hand side. David Hutton's had a good career, he's played a lot of clubs. Uh, Leighton McIntosh on the bench there. Daryl Duffy has been everywhere, scored goals. And Ryan Conroy had a very good Championship Premier League career up in Scotland. Hell of a left foot on him. I believe he scored a Rasper against Rangers with Rafe Rovers, I want to say. The Rangers were coming up the league, so it won't be easy, you know, but I'm going to go over favourites for a reason. It's just, uh, let people know why. I've tended to use Cam a lot more this year. I used to always go passionate, but I just feel being nice, relaxed, and just try to get the boys, you know, hyped and, and see what happens from there. But first match at Fur Park, you know, it'd be an emotional occasion if it was real life. Hopefully, you know, a good performance for the fans, you know, we could properly put this game to bed early, maybe give some people a run out, get them minutes in their legs, uh, and firmly look forward. So, so far, most of the ball, not really anything clear cut, but hopefully, you know, we can maybe get the breakthrough. I'd like to look before the 35 minute mark. Nothing so far who's standing out, if anyone, just seems to be the midfield trio, McHugh, Rodriguez and Campbell. But it always seems to be that way, you do a live play and then absolutely nothing happens, you just feel like you're, you're continually talking. But yeah, dominating the ball, again looking for that breakthrough, maybe try and stretch the game in the second half. Here we go, Richard Tate down the right, Rodriguez got it, some nice build up play, hasted the ball in and a good save from David Hutton. From Ross McCormack there. See Roscoe plays it in and well that was terrible. Near absolutely no one. So address the St Mirren and the other game are winning 3 0 so it looks like it will be a three way fight at the top of the the group between ourselves, St Mirren and Air. So anytime any of the teams play each other, it's certainly gonna be interesting. I think I'm gonna go here a half time with this knock to Rodriguez Gordon, despite him being a key player here. I'm just gonna to look to go four four two. Um push another guy up so I'm going to go for far from pleased. Try and motivate some guys. What I'm going to do then is we'll sacrifice Rodriguez Gordon. So McHugh is going to try and play as a playmaker. I don't know if I like that, but we'll go with it. Rodriguez, although he will get the, the fitness back. Quite happy to take him out, get another striker on. We'll go with Curtis Main. And then that'll give Ross McCormack someone that can, you know, can be his foil. So we'll just change him to a target man. Support, there we go. And we'll just change you to a deep line playmaker. So he's a wee bit more from He's passing. It's not terrible, he just dwells on the ball a bit. But hopefully we can pick something up here. Um, if we continue to struggle, you'd be looking at Elliot Freer for Aribe and maybe Danny Johnson coming on for Ross McCormack. But... There's been plenty of times um, with this new schedule in the League Cup where Motherwell struggled to break the teams down in the first half, but once the professional uh, status of the club changed through, they usually tend to pick up in the second half. I remember 
it was last year or the year before, played Berwick, and it took a long, long time before we eventually kicked in a gear. So I'm going to change this up, make us an attacking mentality, give them another 10 minutes. We've seen McCormack still been pretty poor. There we go, Mark Gillespie getting a rare uh, outing. Hey, stay, McHugh. Oh my god, good boy, let's see what you can do. Ball in, headed away. Are we missing David Turnbull? Is that possible it is? McHugh, Campbell. I, I don't want to make the fullbacks bomb too far forward here, but I might need to. Charles done. Gaboli. Oh dear, if we actually lose here just for messing about. Oops, Declan Glass, that's going to go ball in. Oh my word, that header. Wow. We're losing the home to Airdrie. Oh my god, what's going on here? So, because of that, absolutely shocking. Get Elliot Freer, get Danny Johnson on. And let's properly go for this. So, straight away, you lose any, any sense of defending and you just go for it. So, complete wing backs on, a natural winger, because I usually play inside forward. So, Elliot Freer's on. Hopefully, you can get the ball in the box for Curtis Main and hopefully Danny Johnson. But here's Wilkie. Come on, Curtis Main, that's it. Bombing down the right hand side, there we go, Elliot Freer's in. There we go, 1-1 one, one, Elliot Freer. Choosing that pace there, and then drawing that across the keeper, giving him no chance. But it just shows you don't take your chances, this is what happens. In these situations, especially when you're rusty. McHugh straight in the hut hands. Because you saw their three shots they've had, they've just been clinical. You know, we've got a lot to work on here. Let's see if we can hopefully get a ball out to Elliot Freer to run at defence. McHugh again dwells on the ball, as he's... PPM, put out to Charles Dunn, ball in, oh, it's, it's, I'm just surprised at the fact mother has got a screen in, in, in the corner and Charles Dunn has just scored the rasper, but we'll take that, technically not his first goal because he did score against Greenwich Morton in one of his first games, but delighted we've managed to turn that around, 2-1 up, eh, up, sorry, but just <laughs> it's just disappointing that we've conceded and yeah, we pretty much need to stall out with this team now because the three changes had to get made. But good to see Chico Dunn, or Chili D, whatever you'd like to call him. Instagram sensation if you saw his clip rap into Memphis the Pie. But yeah, pretty good. Positive from him, positive from Elliot Freer. And Richard Tate as well, so a pretty impressive game. So there's a few things to be happy about. And maybe a few negatives as well, you know, we'd maybe want a bit more from Ross McCormack against this standard of opposition. But a good win. Regardless, anyone's good. Two from two. No yellow cards. Most of the ball. Eleven shots on target. You just want to be a bit more clinical. So we'll see. Well done to the lads. We'll kick in to the home screen. We'll take a look at our group. St. Mirren one in four two. Stephen McGinn, that red card could be vital, depending on who he's suspended against. Let's check our inbox. Rodriguez is out for a day. That's fine. Danny Johnson and Gillespie make their debuts. If we quickly go to competitions, we've got six points from six. Here United and St Mirren on three. And of course, the two teams we've beat, of course, are down the bottom. Remembering this, if you win, you get three points. If you draw, you get a point with the option of a second point should you beat the opposition on penalties. So that'll be it for this episode. It's a nice wee win against our manager rivals. The next live play will be that possible all important game against St Mirren. You're up next. Hopefully I can win that. Hopefully the boys get through Spartak Moscow and you know bring a bit of money into the club. And then after that we'll look to kick on with our Ladbrokes Premiership SPFL campaign. So as always guys, thank you for tuning in. It's been much appreciated. If you enjoyed it, drop a wee like. Any comments on the series, football in general? Are you enjoying this year's FM? Who's been your guy in this year's FM? Let us know. You know me, it's been Dejan Jovalich for me, and Alexander Isaac have been my top two. But uh, yeah, let us know if you want to have any note of my progress and my completed challenge document. I can put the link in for that, get a wee database on that as well, just the players that I've encountered in various leagues. So you might find someone that you've never knew of before, and they could certainly help your team. But cheers for tuning in. As I say, next episode of it, when it's ready, cheers for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.